We have learned about fundamental structural components of PostgreSQL, namely databases and tables. In this lesson, we'll explore one more structural component, the schema. A schema is similar to a directory on an operating system. However, instead of containing files, the schema contains a collection of tables. In fact, schemas can also contain other database objects, including data types and functions. Such uses of schemas will not be covered in this course. Schemas have a number of use cases. A primary use case is providing a way for a database with multiple users to grant each user her own set of tables to use and manipulate without interfering with the data of other users. Imagine a company with a number of web developers working on different parts of a web application, wanting to have access to data used in the web application. During development, these users would like to manipulate the tables in the databases in different ways. Rather than giving each user his own database and being concerned with the maintenance of each, a database admin could instead give each user his own schema that includes replicas of the production database. Another important use of schemas is to provide a way to organize components of a database. Perhaps a company has a number of very distinct business units. Schemas provide a way for the company's data to be housed in a single database while having the components of the business that are represented in the database separated from each other through the use of a number of schemas one for each business unit. In the last lesson, we discussed the create table statement and showed how to use this command. By default, newly created tables are added to the public schema. Recall this create table statement that we went over in the last lesson. When this statement is executed, the name of the table is actually public.topic. If another topic table in a schema named commercial existed, performing operations on public.topic would ensure that the correct topic table is being referenced. Like the create database command, the create schema command is very simple. The structure of the command is create schema followed by the name of the schema. Recall the school table that we created in the last lesson with the, within the NCAA underscore BB database. The NCAA groups schools into divisions based on the school's philosophy towards athletics, level of competition, and scholarship opportunities. There are three such divisions. Within the NCAA underscore BB database, we can create a division one schema. We can then create a school table using a similar definition to the one used previously. Now we add a field to keep track of the number of athletic scholarships that are av available at the school. The default zero clause indicates that when entering data in this table, a default value of zero will be used for the num underscore scholarships field if no value is explicitly provided. Naming restrictions similar to those for databases and tables are also applied in naming schemas. The length of a valid schema name should be less than 32 characters given default settings. The schema name should begin with a letter or underscore. In addition, schema names cannot begin with PG underscore as PostgreSQL reserves names with this prefix for system level schemas. In this first chapter, we have gone over important structural components of PostgreSQL databases, namely databases, tables, and schemas, and commands needed to create them. Before moving on to other important aspects of the database creation process, let's practice using the create schema command.